All right, we're going to get to part two of this discussion about combining integers, but before I do, I just want to run through really quickly and and kind of reemphasize what we talked about uh, in the in the previous video and, and discussion. Um, so the I can statement is I can combine integers, and many people instead of saying combine integers, they'll say adding and subtracting integers. It can be kind of a confusing thing, uh, but if you think about it the right way, if you think in terms of our money examples and the way we normally combine things, if we've got debts or we have money, if we owe somebody money, different things like that. Um, hopefully that that turned out. Uh, pretty well as you as you worked on the assignment. Um, we went through a whole bunch of examples uh, yesterday uh, in the previous video and then we talked about some rules and these rules got pretty lengthy here. We talked about if they had the same sign we find the sum of the numbers and then we give the answer the same sign as they both have and when we say the word sum we mean we add the numbers together. If they have different signs we find the difference between the numbers and we talked about how if we find the difference that means we subtract the smaller one from the bigger one and then we give the answer to this integer problem um, by figuring out which one is bigger, which one's larger, and when we say larger we're talking about an absolute value. But the key to all of this was making sure that we had one sign in front of each number. So there were several that we had to rewrite. We didn't have to rewrite any on this page, but if we look on the next page we had to rewrite every single one of those. And then we also shortened this up and we said this. Um, it's kind of a three-step process, or th there are basically three rules for combining these integers. One is to make sure there's only one sign in front of each number, and we use the rules for multiplication in order to do that. If they have the same sign, we find the sum, keep the same sign, so same, sum, same. If they have different signs, then we find the difference and give the sign of the larger one. So this one here kind of rolls off your tongue, same, sum, same. If they're different, we find the difference and use the larger one. So different, difference, and then sign of the larger one for the answer. Um, again, make sure you're memorizing those rules, working with them really fluently. Hopefully we'll get to the point where you can make a, do the, these problems without making any mistakes. That's really our goal here. Um, so this is going to be a pretty short example. Um, going to go, go pretty quickly here. Um, so again, this is part two. The, the, our goal is still the same. We want to be able to combine integers. But I want, you to, I want to show you a couple of problems right here. And I want you to notice something about these problems, especially if you think of our money analogy. So let's apply the rules and then we'll talk money here. These are different signs, so we're going to find the difference. The difference between the two numbers is 4. The bigger one happens to be positive, so the answer is positive 4. Um, this one here, this is positive 10, okay, and minus 6. We know what the answer is. The answer is going to be 4. You can do that from elementary school. But again, different signs, we find the difference. Difference is 4. The bigger one's positive, so the answer to that one's positive 4. Uh, this one right here, same sign, that means we're going to find the sum, so the sum between the two of those numbers, we're going to add those together, we're going to get 20. Keep the same sign all the way through, and then here we've got same sign, so we're going to find the sum, 8 plus 12 is 20, keep the same sign all the way through, so that's going to be negative 20. Um, now, we didn't have to rewrite any of these because they only had one sign in front of each one of them, but I want you to notice, what I want you to notice is this. This was negative 6 plus 10, and this was 10 minus 6, and we got the same answer. So what you'll notice is, as long as we move things around and we keep the correct sign in front of each number, we're going to get the same answer. So whether I slide this negative 6 in the front and then put the plus 10 on, on the back, doesn't make any difference. We're going to get the same answer. Um, same thing here. Here's the minus 12 and the minus 8. If I move those around and put them in the opposite order, it doesn't change what the answer is. We're going to get the same thing either way. You want to be careful when you're moving things around. You've got to make sure that you move the sign with it. Now this isn't going to happen all the time. It's just kind of something interesting that you ought to keep track of because as we do this more and more and we get into the next chapter, you're going to see quite a bit of this. So let's talk about these problems right here. It says, what if we were combining more than two integers? The rules that we went through up above only work if we're combining two integers. They've, we're just checking two of them. They've got to have the same sign or they've got to have different signs like we did up here. Um, but if we've got three of them, how would we do a problem like this? Well, the first thing you're going to notice is you'll notice that we've got more than one sign in front of a couple of these numbers. So the first thing I would recommend doing is rewriting this. So we're going to write negative 14. We're going to see that implied multiplication. This is implied positive times a negative, so this is a negative 2. And we've got a negative times a negative, so this is going to be a positive, so I'm going to put a plus 9 right there. Now, 
if we're going to do this problem, we're going to go through and apply our rules, but our, our rules only work for two at a time, so we're going to do this. We're going to combine the two of those. So these have the same sign. We're going to find the sum. The sum is 16. Keep the same sign all the way through, so that's going to be negative 16. Then we're going to add the other one. We're basically going to do these two at a time. So uh, these have different signs, so we're going to find the difference. The difference between those two numbers, 16 and 9, is 7. The bigger one in absolute value is the 16, um, and it happens to be negative, so the answer on this problem is negative 7. So when we have more than two integers, it's not, it's not a lot more difficult. We just need to keep track of, of doing this just a little bit at a time and applying our rules. So again, key here, make sure you're rewriting if necessary, if there's more than one symbol in front of each one. You'll notice that we've got parentheses on these and all sorts of stuff, but let's just run through and rewrite this. So here's what we've got. That's a plain old negative 5. Positive times a negative is a negative, so we've got a negative 12. Positive times a negative is a negative, so we end up with 6. Uh, let's see, same sign, we're going to find the sum, so that's going to be 17. Keep that same sign, and then we've got that minus 6 tailing on the end there. Same sign again, so we're going to combine those numbers, or add them up, uh, so we find the sum, that's going to be 23. Keep the same sign, so we get negative 23. You will notice, because they're all the same, we could have just added all the numbers together and then said, okay, since they were all negative, we know the answer is going to be negative. That would have worked too. Let's rewrite this one here, negative 15 plus 12. Really didn't have to rewrite much here other than getting rid of the parentheses on that one. And then this is going to be plus 7. Okay. Now, this is where things get a little bit different. If you wanted to combine the two of those, that would be totally okay. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Let's put the two of these together first. So here's what we get. Uh, different signs, we find the difference. The difference is 3. The bigger of the two of those is the 15, and it happens to be negative. Okay, so then we end up with this plus 7 on the end there. Again, different signs, we're going to find the difference. The difference is 4, and the bigger one's positive, so the answer on that one's positive 4. Let me show you a different way to do that one, um, and sometimes people like this better. I kind of like the fact that these are both positive. If they have the same sign, I know I'm, I'm just going to add the numbers together. So I'm going to write the negative 15 right here, and then I'm going to write down what I get when I combine the two of these together. If I combine the two of those together, I end up with 19. And again, they were both positive, so the answer is positive. Now I've got different signs. I find the difference. The difference is... Let's see, the difference is 4, and the bigger one is 19, and it's positive. So I get the same answer either way, um, totally fine. Um, so anyway, that's those are a couple ways where you can deal with you know three or four integers that you're con combining together. Again, got to make sure that you've got to have you've got one symbol, one sign in front of each one of the numbers, and then we just apply those rules that we talked about before. And again, um, one sign in front of each number. Use the rules for multiplication. Same, sum, same, same signs, find the sum, give it the same sign for the answer. Different, difference, larger, different signs, find the difference, give it the sign of the larger one. Hopefully that helps, and now you can get started on uh, the next part of the assignment, 1.3b, uh, I believe it is. Um, and then we'll uh, hopefully get a bunch of practice and get really good at these. So best of luck with those.